Dagon or Dagon was a god worshipped in ancient Syria across the middle of the Euphrates, with primary temples located in Tutul and Terka, though many attestations of his cult come from cities such as Mari and Imar as well. In settlements situated in the upper Euphrates area he was regarded as the father of gods, similar to Mesopotamian Enlil or Hurrian Kumarbi, as well as a lord of the land, a god of prosperity, and a source of royal legitimacy. A large number of theophoric names, both masculine and feminine, attests that he was a popular deity. He was also worshipped further east, in Mesopotamia, where many rulers regarded him as the god capable of granting them kingship over the western areas. Attestations of Dagon from coastal areas are much less frequent and come mostly from the northern city of Ugarit, where Dagon's cult had a limited scope. According to the Hebrew Bible, Dagon was also the national god of the Philistines, with temples at Ashdod and Gaza, but there is no extra-biblical evidence confirming this. The extrasolar object designated Fomalaut B is named after Dagon. According to Philo of Byblos, the Phoenician author Sanchuniathon explained Dagon as a word for grain, scission. Historian Manfred Hutter considers it possible that the god's name derives from the root asterisk DGN, to be cloudy, which he interprets as a sign that he was originally a weather god. However, the notion of Dagon being a weather god is rejected by most researchers of this deity. See the Dagon and Weather Gods section below. Luis Feliu, in his monograph The God Dagon in Bronze Age Syria, rejects both of these theories and concludes that Dagon's name originated in a pre Semitic language spoken in inland Syria. This theory is supported by Alfonso Archi as well. Multiple other ancient Syrian deities are regarded as originating in such a substratum including Astabi, Ashara, and Kababa, the association with the Hebrew word for fish, as in Hebrew, in medieval exegesis has led to an incorrect interpretation of Dagon as a fish god. No known text deals with the parentage or creation of Dagon. His wife was Shalish, though while well attested in Tutul and elsewhere, she is seemingly absent in sources pertaining to Dagon's cult in Terka. Their children were Hadid, analogous to Ugaritic Baal, and possibly Habat, who is attested alongside Dagon and Shalish in a morning ritual from ancient Aleppo. Daniel Schwemmer considers it possible that Dagon, while always viewed as a father of gods, only became the father of the weather god under Hurrian influence. While Wilfred G. Lambert proposed in 1980 that Ashara was sometimes regarded as the wife of Dagon, and this theory is repeated as fact in older reference works such as Jeremy Black's and Anthony Green's Gods, Demons and Symbols of Ancient Mesopotamia, it is no longer considered the consensus. Luis Feliu in his study of Dagon concludes that the association between these two deities was limited to sharing temples in Mesopotamia, and was most likely based on their origin in the western region and shared status as foreign deities in the eyes of Mesopotamian theologians. He also points out that there is no indication that they were closely connected outside of Babylonia, especially in parts of Syria where they were most commonly worshipped. He additionally remarks that Lambert mistakenly assumed Ashara is one and the same as Habaritim, goddess of the river Habur, who also appears in Mesopotamian texts in association with Dagon. Both Feliu and Alfonso Archie point out that Habaritim and Ashara could appear side by side in the same documents and therefore cannot be two names of the same deity. Archie considers it more likely that Habaritim was analogous to Belit Nagar. Like Feliu, he considers it implausible that Dagon was ever regarded as Ashara's husband. He points out that the latter's character was similar to Ishtar's. In Mesopotamia, Dagon was equated with Enlil due to their shared role as fathers of gods. This equation was eventually codified by the god list N equals Anum, which additionally equated their spouses with each other. However, which of the two parts of this equation was viewed as the primary god varied. In Mari, it was Dagon who received Enlil's epithets, and in Imar the logographic writing Ker, a shortened version of Enlil's epithet Ker Gal, Great Mountain, stood for Dagon's name in the Late Bronze Age. It is unclear if this equation was responsible for the logographic writing of the name of Imar's city god as Dnin, Urta, as the god of Imar is unlikely to be Dagon's primary son Hadad, 
whose name was written logographically as Isker, and in Hurrian sources from Syria DNIN. URTA is the war god Astabi rather than a weather god. In Hurrian tradition, Dagon was equated with Kumarbi, though only because of shared senior position in the respective pantheons. Kumarbi was nonetheless called the Dagon of the Hurrians, and Shalish was viewed as his spouse due to this. Syncretic process. However, she is absent from Hurrian myths about Kumarbi. Due to the similarity between the names of Dagon's wife Shalish and Shala, wife of Adad in Mesopotamia, some researchers conclude that the two goddesses were the same and that Dagon was possibly a weather god himself. However, there is no clear proof that Dagon fulfilled such a function or that he was conflated with any weather gods. In some documents from Syrian cities, for example Halab and Ugarit, the logogram NISABA designates Dagon. As noted by Alfonso Archie, in Western Semitic languages such as Ugaritic Dagon's name was homophonous with the word for grain, DGN in alphabetic Ugaritic texts, and the logographic writing of his name as NISABA was likely a form of wordplay popular among scribes, relying on the fact that the name of Nisaba, the Mesopotamian goddess of writing, could simply be understood as grain. 2. Dagon's character is difficult to study in comparison to that of gods who held a comparable Position in Mesopotamia, such as Enlil or Marduk, due to the lack of mythical narratives or hymns about him and comparatively small number of other documents, though researchers were nonetheless able to determine some of his functions. Sources from Imar, Aleppo and Mari attest that Dagon was an archetypal, father of gods, and a creator figure. This aspect of his character was likely exemplified by the epithet, Lord of the Offspring, connected to the Zukru festival from Imar. His connection to funerary offerings was most likely an extension of his role as a divine ancestor, and modern theories regarding him as an underworld god are most likely erroneous. One of Dagon's best documented functions was guaranteeing abundant harvests of grain. However, he was not an agricultural god but rather the source of prosperity in general. In 3rd millennium BCE Tutul Dagon was the god believed to bestow kingship upon rulers. He had a similar role in Mari. There is also some evidence that he could be invoked as a divine witness of oaths. According to texts from Ebla, Dagon's attributes were a chariot and a mace. Dagon's primary cult centers were Tutul, where his clergy was likely involved in the traditional form of governance, and Terka, near Mari, where his temple E. Kisiga, the house, the silent place, was located. The worship of Dagon evidently spread over a large area from these cities even though its principal centers were not a major political power in their own right, a situation which according to Alfonso Archie can be compared to that of Hadabal, a 3rd millennium BCE god of the upper Orontes Valley, and Hadad of Halab. In addition to Tutul and Terka, settlements in which Dagon possessed a temple or shrine include Mari, Sabadum, located in the proximity of the aforementioned city, Yura, on the left bank of the Euphrates, Hakalon, Sagaradum, Zari Amnon, Dasra, Ida Maras, in the Habur Triangle, Admatum, a village in the kingdom of Aslaka, as well as Imar and various difficult to locate villages in its proximity. In Ebla, Dagon was usually referred to with titles such as Lord of Tutul, Bad Du Du Lu, or Lord of the Country, Bad Kalam, but a phonetic spelling can be found in personal names. References to him as Bel Terka, Lord of Terka, are known from Eblate sources too. Shalish was already regarded as his wife in this period. Representatives of the city of Nagar swore allegiance to the king of Ebla in the temple of Dagon in Tutul, which was viewed as a neutral third party. While certain other gods known from the Eblate texts, such as Hadabal and Kura, disappear from records after the fall of the city, Dagon's cult continued and retained its prestige. In Mari, Dagon and Adyu, Hadid, were protectors of the king and played a role in enthronement ceremony. Multiple kings of Mari regarded Dagon as the source of their authority. During the reign of Zimri Lim, Dagon was one of the gods who received the most offerings during festivals, with other deities comparably celebrated in official offering lists including the local dynasty's tutelary deity Atur Mur, Anunatum, Nergal, Shamash, Aya, Ninhursag, Adyu, Hadid, and Belat Ekali, Ninigal.
In a letter Zimri Lim's wife Sibtu enumerated Dagon, Shamash, Atur Mur, Belat Ekali and Adu as, the allies for me, and the deities who, go by my lord's side. The Terka temple was closely associated with Zimri Lim. A source from the period of his reign attests that to celebrate his coronation, a weapon was sent from Hadad's temple in Aleppo to Dagon's in Terka, likely to legitimize his rule. It is possible that this ritual object represented the mace wielded by the weather god in his battle with the sea, analogous to the battle between Baal and Yam in the Ugaritic Baal cycle. Despite the close connection between the clergy of Dagon from Terka and Zimri Lim, he was viewed unfavorably by the population of Tutul and the presence of his officials was in at least one case regarded as a disturbance of Dagon's rights. In Imar, Dagon was the most senior god in offering lists, preceding the weather god, Baal, Hadad, and the city god, whose name was written logographically as Nin, U-R-T-A. An important celebration dedicated to him in this location was so-called Arab Dagon, Entry of Dagon. It took the form of a cultic journey of a statue, similar to celebrations of deities such as Lagamal or Belat Nagar attested in the same region. He was also celebrated during the Zukru festival. Another festival dedicated to him known from documents from Imar was Kisu, which most likely took place in Satapi, a city possibly located further south. The precise meaning of the term Kisu remains uncertain making the nature of these celebrations, and roles of specific deities in them, difficult to ascertain. It has been proposed that the presence of underworld deities, Shuwala and Ur, indicates that it represented the periodic death and return to life of a deity, possibly Dagon's spouse, but this remains speculative. Hammurapi, who around 1400 BCE ruled the area comprising the former independent kingdom of Kana, used the title, Governor of Alaba and Dagon. Due to the scarcity of sources, the later history of Dagon's cult remains unclear, though it is evident that he was no longer the head god of the upper Euphrates area in later times. The head of the Aramean pantheon known from sources from the first millennium BCE was Hadad. Mesopotamian rulers saw Dagon as the lord of the western lands, e.g., ancient Syria, and thanked him for enabling their conquests in that area. Inscriptions credit Dagon with granting Sargon of Akkad rule over the upper land and the cities of Ebla, Mari and Yarmuthi in particular, as well as over areas as distant as the Cedar Forest and Silver Mountains. To gain Dagon's favor, Sargon prayed to him in Tutul. An inscription from the reign of Naram Sin describes inhabitants of the western frontier of his empire, as far as the city of Ulizem, as people whom the god Dagon had given to him. In Mesopotamian sources, Dagon is sometimes regarded as equal in rank to the great city gods of Sumer and Akkad. One text uses the formula, Ishtar in Iana, and Lil in Nippur, Dagon in Tutul, Ninhursag in Kesh, Aya in Eridu. In the Earth III period, marriages between rulers of Syrian and Mesopotamian polytites likely contributed to the spread of the worship of Dagon, as well other western deities like Ashara and Habaritim, in the south of Mesopotamia. In Nippur, Dagon shared a temple with Ashara, first attested during the reign of Amar Sum. Both deities were likely introduced from Mari and were linked only by their northwestern origin. Ishbi era of Aizen, assumed to be of Amorite origin and described by Ibi Sin of Ur as Man of Mari, and traveling rubbish salesman of non Sumerian origin, frequently mentioned Dagon in documents. Several of Ishbi era's successors on the throne had theophoric names invoking Dagon, among them Idan Dagon and Ishmi Dagon. They were also involved in restoring his temples in Aizen and in Ur. Some aspects of the syncretism between Dagon and Enlil seemingly can be attributed to this dynasty. A few of the early Amorite kings of Assyria mentioned Dagon in their inscriptions, for example Shamshi Adad I called himself, Worshipper of Dagon in a document describing the expansion of the god's temple in Terka. Elsewhere he referred to himself as Beloved of Dagon. An inscription of his son Yasma Adad, however, refers to Mullal and Lil, who dwells in Tutul. A subtu, a type of shrine, of Dagon was located near Ka Ude Babur, one of the gates of the Asajal temple complex in Babylon. Idi Marduk Balatu, a king from the second dynasty of Aizen, 
Middle Babylonian period, called himself Dagon's regent. The steel of the 9th century BC Assyrian emperor Ashurnasirpal II refers to Ashurnasirpal as the favorite of Anu and of Dagon. This phrase might, however, be simply a literary relic, in the Mesopotamian god. List N equals Anam. Dagon was placed in the circle of Enlil, similar to another western deity, Ashara. The same document equates him with Enlil and his wife Shalish with Ninlil. There is some evidence that in Mesopotamia Dagon was connected with the poorly known tradition about conflict between the gods and Enmeshara. For example a passage stating that, with Dagon's authority, gods, have been guarding Enmesara from time immemorial, is known. Dagon might however be a synonym of Enlil rather than a distinct deity in this context according to Wilfred G. Lambert. The fragmentary myth Uras and Marduk, here the male god from Dilbat, not the earth goddess, mentions Dagon, similarly most likely fully equated in this context with Enlil. A legendary king of Purushanda who serves as an opponent of Sargon of Akkad in the epic King of Battle bears the name Nur Dagon. Evidence from the coastal city of Ugarit is inconclusive. Whether a temple initially often identified as Dagon's was dedicated to him. Rather than El is a matter of scholarly debate. In lists of gods and offerings from Ugarit, Dagon sometimes follows El but precedes Baal. Two such examples are known, but in six, Dagon follows El and Baal. An incantation against snakebite mentions Dagon alongside Baal, while El is paired with Horan. Dagon appears in six theophoric names known from Ugarit and possibly in a seventh under the logographic spelling Kerr. For comparison Baal appears in 201, with further 36 using the form Hadu. 4. Comparison. In known documents from Mari Hadid appears in 159 names, while Dagon in 138. However, only 17% of known names from Ugarit are theophoric, which makes it difficult to tell how representative are they when it comes to estimating the popularity of some deities. Additionally, many gods prominent in texts from Ugarit, including Anat, are uncommon in personal names, while the Mesopotamian god Ea, under a phonetic spelling of the name, which makes it impossible he was a logographic stand-in. For local god Kothar wa Kassis, appeared frequently in them. Dagon plays no active role in Ugaritic myths, such as the Baal cycle, though Baal is frequently referred to as his son, or lineage. In the poem Marriage of Nikol and Eurek he is referred to as Dagon of Tutul, possibly indicating that he was viewed as a foreign god by Ugaritic scribes. It has been argued by Joseph Fontenrose in an article from 1957 that, whatever their deep origins, at Ugarit, Dagon was sometimes identified with L. Explaining why Dagon, who possibly had an important temple at Ugarit is so neglected in the Rosh Shamra mythological texts, where he is merely the father of Baal but Anat, El's daughter, is Baal's sister, and why no temple of El has appeared at Ugarit. More recent research shows that evidence for identification of Dagon with El is at best indirect. In God lists El was equated with Hurrian Kumarbi and Mesopotamian Enlil rather than directly with Dagon. Alfonso Archie notes in some texts both appear separately, but also that Dagon was extraneous to the theology of Ugarit. Other recent studies provide various other approaches to the problem of Baal's parentage in mythical texts. Daniel Schwemmer proposes that the epithet, son of Dagon, applied to Baal in Ugaritic texts was influenced by Syrian and Hurrian tradition. Noga Ayali Darshan states that the portrayal of the relationship between El and Baal in the Baal cycle is similar to that between Kumarbi and Teshub in the Kumarbi cycle, and that in the Hellenized Phoenician tradition recorded by Philo of Byblos, Demarus, Baal, has both a biological father, Oranos, and a stepfather, Dagon, both of them distinct from Elos, El, in this Phoenician myth a brother of Dagon. She also notes that due to the circumstances of his birth, Teshub had two fathers, one opposing him and one who supported his rise to power. She suggests that therefore it is not necessarily contradictory that two separate gods were regarded as Baal's fathers. Though she assumes both in Ugarit and in Phoenician beliefs Dagon, Dagon was merely an element introduced from the culture of inland Syria and played no significant role himself. Aaron Tugendeft considers Baal an outsider who is not a member of the family of El and Atherit in the beginning of the narrative and thus not their son by birth, 
but merely a brother of their children in the sense known from Bronze Age diplomatic texts. He argues that much as allied kings referred to each other as brothers, so did the gods in Ugaritic myths. The Phoenician inscription on the sarcophagus of King Eshmunazar of Sidon, 5th century BC, relates, Furthermore, the Lord of Kings gave us Dor and Joppa, the mighty lands of Dagon, which are in the plain of Sharon, in accordance with the important deeds which I did. However, said king built no temples dedicated to Dagon in his city, and this god appears only in an insignificant role in the treaty between Asarhaddon and King Baal I of Tyre. It is, therefore doubtful if he was prominent in Phoenician religion. According to Philo of Byblos, Sanchuniathon reportedly made Dagon the brother of Cronus, both sons of the sky, Uranus, and Earth, Gaia, but not Hadad's biological father. Hadad, Damaris, was begotten by Sky, on a concubine before Sky was castrated by his son El, whereupon the pregnant concubine was given to Dagon. Accordingly, Dagon in this version is Hadad's half brother and stepfather. The Byzantine Etymologicon Magnum lists Dagon as the Phoenician Cronus. The first century Jewish historian Josephus mentions a place named Dagon above Jericho. It has, however, been argued that some of the locations possibly named after Dagon were in reality named after the Canaanite word for grain. In the Hebrew Bible, Dagon is referenced three times as the head god of the Philistines. However, there are no references to Dagon as a Canaanite god. According to the Bible, his temples were located at Beth Dagon in the territory of the tribe of Asher, Joshua chapter 19.27, and in Gaza, see Judges chapter 16.23, which tells soon after how the temple is destroyed by Samson as his last act. Another temple, located in Ashdod, was mentioned in 1 Samuel chapter 5 verses 2 to 7 and again as late as 1 Maccabees 10.83 and 11.4. King Saul's head was displayed in a temple of Dagon after his death, 1 Chronicles chapter 10 verses 8 to 10. There was also a second place known as Beth Dagon in Judah, Joshua chapter 15.41. The account in 1 Samuel chapter 5.2 to 7 relates how the Ark of the Covenant was captured by the Philistines and taken to Dagon's temple in Ashdod. The following morning the Ashdodites found the image of Dagon lying prostrate before the ark. They set the image upright, but again on the morning of the following day they found it prostrate before the ark, but this time with head and hands severed, lying on the miptan translated as, threshold, or, podium. The account continues with the puzzling words Rak Dagon Nisur Aleph, which means literally, only Dagon was left to him. The Septuagint, Peshitta, and Targums render Dagon here as trunk of Dagon or body of Dagon, presumably referring to the lower part of his image. Dagon is also mentioned in the first book of Ethiopian Maccabees, 1212, which was composed sometime in the 4th century AD. The fish etymology, while late and incorrect, was accepted in 19th and early 20th century scholarship. It led to an erroneous association between Dagon and Odekon, a half fish being mentioned by Barassus, and with fishman motifs in Mesopotamian art, in reality, depictions of Kalulu, an apotropaic creature associated with the god Ea. The association with dag, dag, fish, was made by 11th century Jewish Bible commentator Rashi. In the 13th century, David Kimi interpreted the odd sentence in 1 Samuel chapter 5.2-7 that only Dagon was left to him, to mean, only the form of a fish was left, adding, it is said that Dagon, from his navel down, had the form of a fish, whence his name, Dagon, and from his navel up, the form of a man, as it is said, his two hands were cut off. The Septuagint text of 1 Samuel chapter 5.2-7 says that both the hands and the head of the image of Dagon were broken off. The first to cast doubt on the fish etymology was Hartmut Schmokel, de, in his 1928 study of Dagon, though he initially nonetheless suggested that while Dagon was not in origin a fish god, the association with Dag, fish, among the maritime Canaanites, Phoenicians, would have affected the god's iconography. However, Later he correctly identified it as a medieval invention. Modern researchers not only do not accept it, 
but even question if Dagon, Dagon was worshipped in coastal areas in any significant capacity at all. In the classical period, the central temple of Gaza was dedicated to a god named Marnas, from Aramaic Marna, Lord. Itamar Singer considered it a possibility that this name was a title of the hypothetical Philistine Dagon, though he notes he was equated not with a Levantine or Syrian deity but with Cretan Zeus. Zeus Cretogenes. However, Gerard Mussies considers Marnas and Dagon to be two separate deities. According to Taco Terpstra, Marnas's origins are nebulous, and while his name can be plausibly assumed to be Aramaic, his iconography follows Hellenistic conventions. At times he is shown naked, similar to a naked and bearded Zeus, either seated on a throne or standing while holding a lightning bolt. Other images show him in a form similar to Apollo, holding a bow and standing on a pedestal in front of a female deity. Regardless of the variety of depictions, the abundance of them on coins indicates that the inhabitants of Gaza held him in high esteem and associated this god with their city. Textual sources portray him as a sky god who also performed oracles. An indirect reference to Marnas occurs in an inscription from Roman Portus from the reign of Gordian III, 238-244 CE, which relays that the city of Gaza honored this ruler at the prompting of its ancestral god. Marnas is mentioned in the works of the 4th century scholar and theologian Jerome, in several stories from his life of St. Hilarion, written around 390 CE, in which he condemns his adherents as idolatrous and as enemies of God. Violent sentiments against the cult of Marnas and the destruction of his temple in Gaza, the Marnion, are described by Mark the Deacon in his account of the life of the early 5th century Saint Porphyry of Gaza, Vita Porphyry. After the destruction of Marnas's temple, Mark petitioned the Emperor Arcadius through his wife Eudoxia to grant a request to have all pagan temples in Gaza destroyed. Terpstra notes there is no direct evidence for the historicity of this account, as Porphyry is not mentioned by other contemporary authors and is entirely absent from inscriptions, though it does indeed appear that in the early 5th century the Temple of Marnas was replaced by a Christian church. However, the majority of Gazans were not Christians in the 5th century CE, and likely continued to worship their city's tutelary deity. Dagon has appeared in many works of popular culture. However, most depend on the biblical account and associated fish god speculation rather than on primary sources and modern research. Notable examples include John Milton's epic poems Samson Agonistes and Paradise Lost, Dagon and the Shadow over Innsmouth by H. P. Lovecraft, Dagon by Fred Chappelle, Middlemarch by George Eliot, and King of Kings by Malachi Martin. Also, the extinct prehistoric beaked whale species, Daganotum majnum, is named after Dagon. Attempts at other pronunciations Hebrew, Sumerian, Phoenician, 